Oh, we haven't got we haven't got your little sting there, Liam. But never mind. So we did we'll see move a on. A glimpse of your elbow. It has to be said. So <laughs> we've go. we've so, seen a bit of you. That the biggest problem facing the. Rishi, Rishi Sunak, I almost said the Chancellor. <laughs> We've gone through so many different iterations of all these politicians. He's the Chancellor and he's also the former, former Chancellor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now former, as former, former Chancellor, because there's Nadim Zahawi. That's true. Now as Prime Minister is going to be tackling the economy. How does he do it? Well, it's going to be very tough, but I think the early signs are quite good. What we've seen since Rishi Sunak was confirmed as Prime Minister, pretty much since Boris Johnson dropped out as Prime Minister uh, in the running is borrowing costs falling. These are the 10-year guilt yield. This is the amount of money the government must pay to borrow, which is sort of the lowest form of borrowing and should be the lowest, most cheapest form of borrowing in the country. And that's fallen from about 4.2% per year interest rate to about 3.75% when I last looked in the newsroom just now. So that's a pretty chunky fall. And that reduction should start to be felt in mortgage rates that are offered to families trying to buy a home or people trying to remortgage on their existing home or other personal loans. So we can see immediately the impact in the real world mm. of a bit more stability. The question now is whether or not the Tories can keep it together, because, of course, there is speculation that there's discontent about Rishi Sunak, not least among the Tory rank and file across the country. But, of course, I mean, what the Tories are going to get behind, as any political people would, is success. And if you start to see, say, in the real world, some very immediate success of just the idea of stability in someone in number 10 who understands what happens in number 11, then they're going to get behind that, aren't they? They'd be fools not to. Yeah, it, people will want to see that success, but... I would say that, and there is kind of a little bit of a honeymoon period at the moment, a sort of warm, warm, fuzzy feeling, the idea that, you know, a lot of people are saying the grown-ups are back in the room and so on with the combination of Rishi Sunak in number 10 and, bar the shouting, Jeremy Hunt probably staying in number 11. I'd be amazed if yeah. they changed the Chancellor at this point, as if we hadn't had enough Chancellors in recent months. But I think that could soon change because the cost of living squeeze is getting tighter. There's going to be a big... Uh, a confrontation with trade unions over the next few weeks and months, not least in the public sector, because the public sector pay rounds are coming up and the government needs to decide if it is going to award pay um, increases that are, sit that are up there with inflation. So that would be 10 percent. How would how would the four fifths of people who work in the private sector feel mm. if they're paying for 10 percent pay rises among the fifth of the people who work in the in the public sector. But he's got a very strong argument, hasn't he? To, if he when he turns around and says, says, well, actually, my priority is getting inflation down. So rather than paying you up to inflation, we want to get inflation down and get inflation down quickly. How can he go about that? I, I think I think that's true, but and but the public sector people will say we haven't had a decent pay rise, and they haven't for for a while. Our pay rises are below the rate of inflation that we have had, and then the private sector will say that as well. So I do think there'll be a lot of discontent. And you talk about the cost of living, Stephen. The ONS. I've got a graphic here. The Office for National Statistics brought some numbers out this morning. If we can have a a quick look at them here, these are food price increases from September. 21 to September 2022. We're told the headline rate of inflation is 10%, but if you're buying vegetable oil, mm. up 65%. Pasta, up 60%. Tea, crikey, tea. The, this country's built on cups of tea. And tea prices are up 46%. Mm. Why have I picked out these foodstuffs? Because these are some of the most basic commodities that are bought, not least by lower income families. And what you're seeing there is the cost, increased transport costs. You're seeing also the impact of the war in Ukraine. Yeah. You know, pasta and vegetable oil, that's wheat and, and sunflower seeds and all kinds of other seeds which come from Russia and Ukraine. So there you're seeing the immediate impact of this east-west economic war. And the, and the reality is, we've often said here on GB News, that the headline rate of inflation is much, much higher for lower income families. Yeah. Okay, Liam, for now, thank you.